Buckskin Bill here with another fun project. Today we're going to turn tallow from two deer that I just harvested into candles. Let's get started. I started with three bags of tallow that I had harvested and frozen from two white-tailed deer that I butchered. Unlike beef, the tallow in deer is not marbled throughout the meat, but it's just under the skin, mostly on the hindquarters or inside near the tenderloins. I began by chopping the tallow into smaller pieces for the rendering process. I added the tallow to a large pot on medium heat, and I stirred the tallow on a regular basis to keep any of it from sticking to the bottom of the pot. The rendering process took several hours. One important note here, I did the rendering on the kitchen stove. I would recommend you do this on an outside burner, as even after opening the windows, the house smelled like crispy bacon for about three days. After rendering down the tallow for several hours, I used a slotted spoon to pull most of the crispy residual material from the rendered tallow. I've heard that some people actually eat the crispy residual material, but after trying it, it just left the inside of my mouth coated with a greasy film that took several minutes to get rid of. It wasn't for me, but I'll leave that up to you. After removing as much of the residual material with the slotted spoon as possible, I then filtered the tallow by pouring it through cheesecloth into another pot. Another important note here. After straining the tallow through the cheesecloth, I was so excited to make my first candle that I poured that strained tallow into a candle jar. The result was that there was still a little residual left in the strained tallow and it did add a slight bacon smell to the candle when it burned. I would highly recommend what I did for subsequent candles. Allow the rendered tallow to cool completely and then extract it from the pot onto a plate. During the cooling process, all of the residual material sinks to the bottom of the pot and can easily be scraped from the tallow cake as you can see here. Then simply reheat the tallow to liquefy it before adding it to your candles. Also allow the tallow to cool slightly before pouring them into the candle jars. If it's too hot it may crack the jars. When selecting a wick material, make sure that it is cotton and not a synthetic material. The cord I chose here I thought was a cotton material and wound up being a synthetic material. The process I use here still applies and later in the video I will show how I worked around the problem and how you can avoid a similar fate. Next I heated some beeswax in a double boiler. I used the beeswax to coat the wicks as it makes them a lot more rigid as opposed to just using the tallow. However, with that said, when I found these wicks that were synthetic wouldn't work, I took the cotton baling twine that I later used and only soaked them in the tallow, and they worked just fine. I did find that the beeswax did make it easier to keep the wick straight. I dipped the wicks in the beeswax and straightened them out and allowed them to cool. Here I wanted to demonstrate what happened when I tried to light the synthetic wick. You can see that the material just melts and disintegrates into the candle. This was an epic failure on my part. To avoid this pitfall, here's a little experiment you can do to make sure that your wick will burn and is not synthetic. I have two pieces of cordage here. The white is synthetic, the other is a cotton baling twine. I coat both with a layer of tallow and then try to light them. As you can see, the synthetic will simply melt and doesn't burn. When I light
light the cotton fiber, it plainly burns, and in fact, it was almost impossible to blow out. So choose your wick material carefully or buy pre-made wicks. To get the wicks to stick to the bottom of the jar, add a little melted beeswax to the bottom of the jar and force the wick into the material before the wax hardens. As long as your tallow isn't too hot when you add it to the candle, this should keep your wick in place. Once the tallow had cooled, I added some of the melted beeswax to give the tallow candle a little more rigidity. However, I didn't add much beeswax. In later candles, I added no beeswax at all and didn't notice any difference. This worked out well for me. As you can see, I poured this into the jars with the synthetic wicks. I was able to save these candles by forcing a standard screwdriver down the center of the candle and adding a cotton wick. Had I had a lot of beeswax in the candle, I'm not sure I would have gotten the screwdriver down in. When I lit the cotton wick, the melting tallow quickly filled the hole and the problem was solved. You'll also know that I added essential oils to give the candles a fragrance. Without the fragrance, the candles have almost no scent at all. I love these candles and how little they cost to make. When you make your own candles, leave comments here to let me know how it went. I hope these tips and tricks help you to make your own tallow candles. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And as always, thanks for watching.